So our fifth episode opens with Ned lamenting the death of Sir Hugh. Show Ned is a bit smarter than Book Ned. Show Ned suspects that Sir Hugh may have been set up and placed against the mountain in the lists. In the book, Ned is a bit dumber. Varys has to specifically tell Ned that Sir Hugh was killed. Now it's a bit puzzling that Varys did this. We find out that Varys is trying to keep the peace while his plans in Essos go forward. And yet, Varys promotes mistrust between the Starks and the Lannisters. It's very odd, because Sir Hugh is likely killed by Littlefinger. So I'm not sure why Varys would be doing something that's not in his best interest, but in Littlefinger's. My best guess is that he's trying to get brownie points with Ned. Now we get a little extra exposition between Ned and Barristan that prove that the two men respect each other. And they do. Of course, in a way, Barristan is a vow breaker. He switched sides and abandoned Viserys, something that he does feel guilty about and tries to atone for later. Ned, though, doesn't hold this against Selmy at all. However, to Ned, Jaime switching sides against Ares is inexcusable. Now yes, there's a difference between stabbing someone in the back and abandoning a child to a life of begging, but yeah, I'm gonna say that Ned isn't very consistent. Now next we get this scene between Robert and Ned where Robert wants to join the lists to fight. What's missing is why Robert wants to join the lists. He specifically wants to join the lists because Cersei forbade him to. Now later, Varys turns this into a bit of paranoia in Ned's mind. And again, I don't know why Varys is doing this. To get brownie points? Varys tells Ned that Cersei demanded that Robert not be in the lists because that would anger Robert and make him want to join the lists. Then someone could assassinate him in the tourney. Of course, this is likely one big lie. Who knows why Cersei didn't want Robert in the lists? She probably didn't want him in because she wanted Jaime to win, and Jaime would feel obligated to lose to Robert. Now this is a very important scene. We know at the Harrenhal tourney that Rhaegar crowned Lyanna with a crown of winter roses. Loras is the Knight of Flowers. His sigil is a rose, and he often wears a blue cape. And in the book, his armor actually has blue flowers all over it. Now yes, Loras wears the blue armor on a different day than he crowned Sansa, but the parallel is still there. Sansa has been crowned the Queen of Love and Beauty at the Hands Tournament. In the book, Littlefinger even comes up to her and tells her this. And of course, later, Littlefinger kidnaps Sansa as well. It seems that Littlefinger is trying to fulfill prophecy in the same way that Rhaegar did. Now here, Littlefinger reveals that Loras cheated. He used a mare in heat. And so I wonder, did Rhaegar cheat in his tourney as well? Now I should say that this scene doesn't quite make sense in the show. Littlefinger just bet Renly that Loras would lose. Why would he do this if he knew that Loras' mare was in heat? In the book, he loses his bet on two different riders. Now the Mountain gets angry about losing, attacks Loras, and the Hound saves Loras' life. Now it's not very clear in this scene, but Loras is actually ceding the tourney to the Hound. The Hound has won all of the money. And once again, the Blue Rose has crowned a champion. A champion who becomes very linked to the other champion, Sansa. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Road, Tyrion and Catelyn get attacked by hill tribes. Now in the book, Tyrion is much more of a badass. Not only does he have acrobatic abilities, but it also seems that he's been trained in fighting. In the book, he grabs a battle axe and goes to work. He even gets angry at a singer for being such a craven that he steps on the singer's fingers and breaks them. Show Tyrion definitely has an arc of rising to become a badass over time. To give Bran, Lewin, and Theon some more screen time, we get this education scene. And once again, we learn about the Greyjoy Rebellion. And along with some TNA, we once again learn that Theon was upset about his warding. Now next we have a scene where Varys lies to Ned and says that Sir Hugh poisoned Jon Arryn. Now as I mentioned earlier, in the book Varys also adds that Cersei was trying to kill Robert at the tourney. Again, it's puzzling why he does this. Now there is a fan theory that Varys never lies. He just words things carefully. I would say that this exchange between Ned and Varys proves that theory incorrect. While it's possible that you could say that Varys didn't actually come out and say that Cersei planned to kill Robert or that Sir Hugh killed Jon Arryn, Varys ends the exchange with a bold-faced lie. Ned asks Varys, what was Jon Arryn doing that got him killed? Varys responds, asking questions. And that's a lie. Jon Arryn was murdered because he was trying to send Sweet Robin away to get fostered. Varys lies. That's all there is to it. Now next we have this scene where Arya is chasing cats and overhears Varys and Illyrio talking. And again, it's puzzling. Varys complains that the Starks and the Lannisters are at each other's throats. And yet he's clearly responsible for some of that animosity. 
it may be that Varys and Illyrio are not exactly on the same page. Now in the book, this scene is much more revealing as Varys talks about other players of the Game of Thrones. Lysa, Stannis, and Tywin are all gathering armies, but it's the Tyrells that are kind of interesting. They're trying to bring Marjorie to court to marry to Robert. They must know about the incest and must think that the Lannisters are about to fall. Now I guess to give Littlefinger some more screen time, we have this added hostile scene between Varys and Littlefinger. They both tell each other that they know what the other is up to. Now in the books, I'm not sure if Littlefinger knows what Varys is up to, but Varys specifically says that he doesn't know what Littlefinger is up to. Littlefinger is the one man that can evade Varys' little birds. Now Yorin arrives and tells Ned that Cat has seized the imp. And this is one of the prime reasons why I think Yorin is a servant of Varys. Yorin says he rode as fast as he could to King's Landing, but Varys already knows about the seizure, so unless someone at the inn rode faster than Yorin, it was Yorin himself that told Varys. Now Kat makes it to the Vale and gets a cold welcome. In the book, her welcome isn't so bad as she's welcomed by Blackfish, her uncle. Meanwhile, back in King's Landing, Robert has found out that Daenerys is pregnant. Ned is very much against killing Daenerys. Now, I am under the belief that Ned protests too much. I feel Daenerys must have a special connection to the Starks. Now, others would argue that Ned is just feeling guilty about Aegon and Rhaenys. And it's true, Ned does have a lot of guilt about those children. However, Ned's fury about the whole thing is overwhelming, and he quits his hand. Now, it should be noted that quitting his position at this point is extremely dangerous. His wife has seized Tyrion, and his family may go to war with the Lannisters. He needs Robert's support more than ever. Now, some might argue that Ned is just an honorable guy, and this is what honorable guys would do. However, we actually have a control, Barristan Selmy. Although not part of the small council in the show, he is part of the small council in the book. He's an honorable guy. In fact, he should have very strong connections to Viserys and Daenerys. How does he react? Well, he's certainly against the assassination. But he's not temper tantrum, storm out of the room, quit his position, insult the king angry. Why is Ned risking his entire family for Daenerys? Now what's missing from the show is as Ned leaves, the small council starts talking about how they're going to kill Daenerys. Pycelle recommends a faceless man. However, Littlefinger says they're too expensive. How would he know? After the meeting, Littlefinger finds Ned and tries to take credit for the fact that he dissuaded them from using a faceless man. He claims that he saved Daenerys' life. And now this is a bit curious. We have Littlefinger doing something that's in Varys' best interest. Was he paying Varys back? Anyway, Littlefinger, seemingly to keep Ned in King's Landing, offers to show Ned the last person that Jon Arryn spoke with. In the book, the murder mystery is a bit different. Ned has been searching for a brothel that Jon Arryn and Stannis visited. Littlefinger offers to show him that. And we finally get to meet Robert Arryn, AKA Sweet Robin. Of course, in the show, he's just Robin, because I guess there's too many Roberts running around. Now, I'd like to point out something interesting here. Lysa is upon a Weirwood throne. This is very reminiscent of Bloodraven and Beric Dondarrion. And like Bloodraven, Sweet Robin is feeding. When Bran first meets Bloodraven, he thinks that Bloodraven looks like a babe breastfeeding upon a mother. And it should be noted that both Sweet Robin and Bran are obsessed with flying. Sweet Robin also says something kind of weird and interesting when they first meet him. Lysa asks him if he remembers Catelyn, and Sweet Robin says he thinks so. Of course, Sweet Robin was only about one the last time he met Catelyn. As time goes on, we discover that Sweet Robin knows a lot of things he shouldn't know. And so when Lysa says that Jon Arryn's last words were, the seat is strong, I wonder if it's actually about Sweet Robin after all. So Tyrion gets thrown in his sky cell. In the book, a lot of time is dedicated to the fact that the sky cells cause madness and induce people to jump. Now we get this extra scene between Loras and Renly. Now I should say that in the book, Loras and Renly's relationship is a little more subtle. A lot of people miss it. But Loras' emotional outbursts show that he was in love with Renly. For example, when Renly dies, Loras, in a fit of rage, kills two of Renly's Rainbow Guards. Then again, the Tyrells are schemers. In the book, Loras knows about the incest and is trying to marry Marjorie to Robert. I leave open the possibility that Loras was never in love with Renly. Loras' fits of rage may be about setbacks to their schemes and not about his love. The Tyrells are shrouded in mystery, and they may have a master plan as well. So we haven't seen Cersei in a while. 
So the writers gave her this extra scene with Robert, talking about strategy. This scene is really about the small folk. Viserys feels the small folk will rise for him, and in this scene Robert agrees with him. It would make sense that Robert values the small folk as he utilized them in the Battle of the Bells. However, there is some evidence in the book that the small folk missed the Targaryens. Who the small folk will support in the end is an open question. So it should be noted that Cersei mentions this dead son again that's only in the show and not in the book. So she wasn't lying to Catelyn. So Ned makes it to the brothel and meets another of Robert's bastards. Now in the book, Ned has a weird internal monologue about bastards and their nature. Fans debate the meaning of this internal monologue quite a bit. Ned thinks about how the gods hate bastards and thinks about John, which would seem to imply that John is actually a bastard. And Ned thinks about Rhaegar, and because he's thinking about Rhaegar so close to thinking about John, some people think that Rhaegar is John's dad. But it's much weirder than that. Ned thinks about how he hasn't thought about Rhaegar in years. How would that be possible if he were raising John's son? How would that be possible, period? Ned's thoughts just don't seem to make sense. Now in the show, the brothel is Littlefinger's, but in the book, it's run by a woman named Shataya. Shataya is likely working with Varys. For some reason, Varys wants to protect Robert's bastards, including Gendry. We have yet to find out why. And finally, Jaime confronts Ned about the seizure of Tyrion. Now in the book, there's no big sword fight and no guard stabs Ned in the leg. Ned gets injured because his horse slips. Though it's awfully convenient that Ned gets injured and has to stay in King's Landing. For this reason, I think maybe somebody possessed Ned's horse. But a lot of people think that's just way too much magic going on. And that's episode 1.5. See you in episode 1.6.